This is my fruit stand. Hey guys, so in today's video, I am really excited because I've been wanting to try this puzzle brand for quite a while now. And I'm pretty sure I say that with every new to me puzzle brand that I do, but this one is one that a lot of you enjoy and have mentioned in the comments. And I already have two sets, so I figured, you know, it's about time that I finally start working on one before I buy more. And the brand that I am talking about is Springbok. And this one is called The Fruit Stand. It is 500 pieces and it is 18 by 23.5 inches when it's completed. Now the box itself does have some information about the brand. These sets are made in the USA and they use an 18% thicker chipboard than the average puzzle. And due to their unique dies, no two puzzle pieces are alike. Now I'm gonna be honest, I'm not too sure what that means. I'm guessing they're talking about the ink that they use for their image prints. But I'm pretty sure, and correct me if I'm wrong, they're talking about no two puzzle sets are the same. Not necessarily two pieces from the same box itself. But again, correct me if I'm wrong down below. And they have a 100% customer satisfaction guaranteed, which is also great because I'm assuming if there's anything wrong with your set in terms of if there's any missing pieces, you can contact them and they'll, you know, sort it out for you. Now, I do remember there were a lot of other images from Springbok at the, at the store that I picked this one up at. But the reason why I picked this particular set was, I mean, this is, this is beautiful. It's a fruit stand. I mean, yeah, that's the name of it. But this isn't just any fruit stand. This is my fruit stand. I finally learned how to successfully grow beautiful fruits and vegetables. And now I just grow so many that I just have to sell it because I can't eat it all before it goes rotten. It's super early in the morning and the sun hasn't quite risen fully yet. I'm just about ready to be open. Even my chickens are ready to greet the customers. This is gonna be a good day. Everything just looks too good. Even the birds are singing for the customers to come by. I got a lot of good help here. But the colors in this image just look so vibrant. I really hope the image print looks just as vibrant as this box. And the scenery is spectacular. I also really love the barn in the background. Now, judging by the image on the back of the box here, it looks like Springbok does offer quite a few unique shapes. I'm seeing some pretty crazy ones here, so it looks like this is gonna be quite an interesting challenge overall. The box does have a sample image of the piece size, and honestly, that doesn't look too bad. I feel like we can get some good detail within that little piece, so you know what? I don't think this is going to be extremely challenging, but you know, then again, I don't know. The sky looks like it could be a bit tricky. You know, the trees obviously can get a bit tricky, but overall, I feel like the general detail in this image is pretty straightforward. I don't think sorting is going to be a big issue, but in terms of, you know, predicting completion time, I, I haven't a clue. The piece shapes look pretty darn unique, so I feel like that's going to throw a little challenge in there. But overall, I'm very curious to see what these pieces feel like, considering that it says that they use 18% thicker chipboard. So I think these are going to be pretty solid pieces. But you know what? We're not going to know until we finally open it. So you know what? I'm going to stop talking. Let's get this open and let's get started. All right. Let's open this up. Now, it is covered in plastic wrap, so let's get this off first. All right, so got ourselves a plastic bag here. No poster, which is a little bit of a bummer, but you have what looks to be the whole puzzle image on the front of the box anyways, so this should be good enough. Let's open this bag up and let's see what these pieces are like. First of all, before I do that, I am seeing a little bit of puzzle dust in the bag. Not as much as Robinsberger, but there is some in here. You know what? It doesn't seem too excessive. Let's, let's just open this up and stop complaining. First impression so far here. These are, these are pretty big puzzle pieces. Check out these shapes as well. That's a crazy shape. Look at this one too. This is gonna be fun. And look at the size of these. These are pretty darn big too. 
I can really see what they're talking about in terms of the thickness of the puzzle. These are quite thick compared to other brands that I've tried. Funnily enough, I, oh, you saw that? Look, it kind of has like that, that vein there. Is that what you call it when you bend it? You got to be careful with pieces like this, as you can see, because it can bend. And I think that's mainly because, you know, they're much bigger pieces. They're, if they were a lot smaller, probably half the size, they would feel a lot sturdier, but it doesn't necessarily feel very, very strong. But that, that's my opinion. For the most part, they are, but I think it kind of also depends on the shape you're playing with here. This one feels pretty solid, but again, if you go with something much bigger, like with these thin areas in the puzzle piece, that's gonna be a bit weak. Oh, Ooh, what did I do here? Interesting. That one kind of gave way a bit, as you can see. Um, I mean, obviously you don't wanna do that with all your puzzle pieces. I'm just doing that just to kind of get a sense of what I'm working with here and seeing how it is in terms of quality. But you know, you don't have to be a beast with your puzzle pieces. Let me be the beast, I'll do the damages. But anyways, the image print is really nice. It is very clear. The colors are just as vibrant as they are on the box. You do get quite a bit of glare on these, as, as you can see here. Now the bag itself did have quite a bit of puzzle dust in it, but it doesn't look like it's left too much on my table. I do see some, but this is not very, very dusty in general. The more I feel these pieces, I'm kind of getting a weird, I can't describe it, it's almost like a residue on my fingers. Kind of like a film on it, almost. It's a bit strange. Have any of you experienced that with your Springbok puzzles? Kind of feels unnaturally smooth on my fingers, if that makes any sense. I don't know if I'm going a little crazy here, but I mean, that's just kind of what I'm feeling. Probably it's residue from production or whatever gloss they put on top of this. Maybe there's some light residue. I don't know, I feel like I gotta wash my hands. But anyways, guys, enough of that. I really wanna see what this is gonna look like when it's completed, so let's get started. Okay, sorting was pretty straightforward. First tray were the edges, second was anything that had the fruits or even the chickens. Third tray had the flowers. The fourth tray was the fruit wagon itself. Fifth tray had pieces with the barn, the tractor, and any other buildings. The sixth tray had all the tree pieces. Seventh tray had sky pieces. And the eighth tray basically just had like the dirt area and any other random pieces that I couldn't figure out where they went. And as I was doing this, I was still getting that weird residue on my hands. But after giving them a quick wash, I went straight to the edges, just to get my frame in place. Then I went after the tray with the fruits and vegetables because, of course, I love piecing together food. I just love food. Anyways, but as I pieced this area together, my mind wandered, and I thought more about how I could possibly learn how to finally grow fruits and vegetables of my very own. Do any of you have a garden? And if so, what do you think is the easiest thing to grow, especially for a novice like me? I know that may not seem very puzzle related, but this is what puzzling does to me. It takes my mind off the everyday stuff and my thoughts start to relate to the image I'm piecing together. Does puzzling do that to you? If it does, hit the like button so that I know I'm not the only one who gets taken over by their puzzle image. So my sorting was pretty bad. There were quite a lot of pieces in my edge tray that were not actually edges. And obviously I realized this as I was putting them together. But a lot of these pieces will actually trick you into thinking that they have a straight edge. Because they are so slightly off and you can confuse these during the sorting process if you're moving fairly quickly. Now this very much reminded me of a dottle puzzle in terms of the unique shapes. But this is not necessarily a bad thing. This really just added to the overall challenge of this puzzle. Now, another thing I noticed as I was piecing this puzzle together was that, and I hope this makes sense, but it kind of felt spongy. 
when you were putting the pieces together. You kind of have to like push it in a few times just to get it down flat. Really the overall fit is a little weird. And I'm sure throughout the video you can see this at times, but glare was no joke with this. I kept struggling to get the right angles, not only with my camera, but with the way I was sat in front of it. So just be aware of that. And back on the topic of the overall fit of these pieces, as I move towards the top during the completion process, it just got more and more spongier compared to the bottom. I had to keep brushing my hand across it just to get it flat because some sections would just lift off the table. The fit of the bottom area of the puzzle, it looked pretty tight. The image print itself was well fit together, but the higher I climbed up the image during the completion process, the image print just looked separated from each other. And of course it had to be the sky, right? That's the lightest part of the puzzle. So you can see it a lot more. It just looked like the top half of the puzzle was loosely fit, but it, it wasn't really. Now, I don't know if this is an issue that can occur during the cutting process during production, but maybe, I don't, I don't know. Now, Springbok notes to having an 18% thicker chipboard, but honestly, I didn't really see the benefit to that. And now that I think about it, maybe that's why the fit felt and looked the way it did. I didn't feel like it made the pieces any stronger than any other brand. I mean, is that why they increased the chipboard anyways? To make them stronger? I don't know. I need to look that up. But let me know down below if any of you have ever experienced this with Springbok. Or was my particular set just having a bad day or something? Now what's great about Springbok is their piece size. You get some really big pieces here. And that's great because you get a lot of detail within the piece and they are very easy to hold and maneuver if you tend to have challenges with that. The colors are great and the print is very nice and clear, which I also love because that just really helps me overall with my completion time. It makes the puzzle quite easy to complete. But this does throw some curveballs at you with those crazy shapes. They were a lot of fun really, and it threw in that extra challenge for what's an overall an easy image really. This puzzle took me about four hours to complete. Now this retails at the store that I got it from for $14.99. And I th only paid about $7.49 for it during a sale. And to be honest, I'm glad I didn't pay more for it. Now, don't get me wrong, I did enjoy putting this together. I absolutely love the image and it was a lot of fun. But at the same time, it felt like, I hate to say this, it felt kind of cheap to me. I almost feel like it shouldn't really retail for about $15. It, it just wasn't fully there to me. Even the box was very thin cardboard. It was just very flimsy and it doesn't even have a poster with it, which, you know, is not always a big deal to me. But really, I would rather pay that price for like a Cobble Hill puzzle or even a White Mountain puzzle. To me, they feel more solid than this. So I'm really glad that I picked it up whilst it was on sale. And I know some might think or say, oh, $15 is not expensive, but to me, it is especially when I know I can get something that I am more happy with quality wise for the same price or even for less. I would really only buy a new spring box set if I could really get a good sale on it. Again, it's just my opinion, but please let me know down below what your overall experience has been like with this brand, good or bad. I really do need to try another Springbok puzzle and I do have one just so that I can kind of compare the two sets and figure out if this is kind of a Springbok thing or not. And I know most of you have said that their quality has actually gone downhill over time. 
So I'd be very curious about what that experience would be like. So I'm going to be on the lookout for a much older set from Springbok. And I do plan to do a comparison video at some point. So if you are new here and you want to catch that video or hear what I have to say about other jigsaw puzzles and brands, be sure to subscribe. And I know I mentioned Cobble Hill and White Mountain before, so I'm going to leave one of those videos right here so that you can check that out as well. Well, guys, I'm ready to start my next puzzle adventure. So thank you for watching. Hope you're all doing well, and I will see you in the next one.